A little while ago now, Ibanez sent me this 8-string, the RGD MS... <coughs> the RGD S8C... <coughs> the RGD MS8 CSM to be my first ever 8-string guitar. You might have seen the unboxing video I did of this guitar pretty much the minute I got it, and that was honestly the most excited I'd been to unbox a guitar in quite a while, because actually having an 8-string in my arsenal at home now, as opposed to just getting to play them briefly at trade shows and other events, was uncharted territory for me. And every day since that unboxing, I've spent at least 45 minutes to an hour playing this thing, which now qualifies me to give you the full, unbiased scoop on it. I'm not being paid for this, I asked Ibanez for this specific guitar after trying it time and time again at different events, and they obliged. But nobody is paying me to lie, and if you think I'd let them bribe me with a guitar, then you're an idiot. I'm literally paying taxes on this thing. So let's start off with the specs. It's got a Nayato body, a maple neck with two walnut skunk stripes for what I assume are two truss rods, even though there is only one truss rod adjustment nut, but uh, I mean, eight strings do usually have two truss rods, right? It's got a beautiful fretboard, which the spec list says is ebony. Quite frankly, I would have guessed it's just very dark rosewood, but either way, nice fretboard, ebony it is, I suppose. 24 jumbo stainless steel frets arranged to make this thing a 25.5 to 27.2 inch multiscale. It's got two Fishman Fluence modern nine string humbuckers, which is quite interesting. I'll get back to that in a second. Three way pickup selector, one volume with a push pull voicing switch for both the Fishmans and a coil split for the humbuckers as well. And obviously no tone because who's going to need a tone knob for this thing? got eight golden Godo locking tuners, which have to be covering my face in order for the camera to focus on them, and eight matching individual string monorail bridges, which is very cool. Spoke wheel truss rod adjustment, again, only one, even though I assume this thing has two truss rods. I'm gonna have to inquire about that because I actually, I wonder why that is, uh, if it adjusts both of them at a time, or if this is just aesthetic because one stripe down the middle would have looked weird, and a plastic nut. Hmm. You'll have to excuse the gold-plated saddles already looking a bit worn in the close-ups. I have absolute acid sweat, and this is a very, very broad issue with a lot of gold-plated guitar hardware, and not a quality issue with these particular models. But if your hand is rubbing against it all the time and you're sweating, it's going to start looking like your sweat has been eating through the plating. Personally, I still have a huge soft spot for gold guitar hardware, and so I don't care very much. If you're very fussy about it, Take that into account, I suppose. So, positives first, because that is just good manners. I genuinely don't think any guitar, besides like my first ever guitar, has ever motivated me to play as much as this thing has. I haven't even gotten around to changing the strings on it yet, because every time I pick it up out of the stand to do so, I just end up playing it for an hour instead. So if I had to sum up this review into one word, that word would be awesome. But luckily, we're on the internet, and I don't need to do that, so what makes it awesome? First off, the fact that they chose to put 9-string pickups on it is sick. I have a guitar here made by Patrick Hufschmied, a luthier who I've filmed a mini-documentary about over on my main channel, 6-string TV. And the thing that he likes to do on his 6-strings, this is a 7-string, so he hasn't done it, is to put 7-string pickups onto his 6-string models purely for aesthetic reasons. Because with pickups made for the respective number of strings, the top and bottom strings, respectively, always have a little bit less magnet real estate, and that just doesn't look as good. And I like that Ivanez has done this too here, because as you can see, the top and bottom strings now each have even more magnet space than the ones in the middle. Again, purely aesthetic, makes no sonic difference really, but I like it. Also, the switch positions are perfect. Now, honestly, I wasn't expecting to like these very much in the long run before I owned this guitar, but now that I've had it for a while, I can honestly say they are amazing. They look like they might get in the way while playing, 
but the opposite is the case. I've never once accidentally hit a knob or a switch while playing, but they are still perfectly within reach without having to move your arm too much when you actually want to use them. So you can tell there was really like thought put into the switch placement here. I also just appreciate the specs here in general. This guitar is 1200 euro, and these days, tragically, a lot of guitars in this price range will come with much, much lower specs. But this thing has Godo, Fishman, stainless steel frets, all the good stuff. It's kind of sad that that isn't the total standard anymore these days, but in a world where it's not, this sticks out particularly positively. That being said, it did not come in a gig bag or a case. Devil's advocate, sort of, if you want to call it that. I feel like that's what allowed them to keep the specs this good without raising the price. I've come to be good friends with quite a few people on the manufacturing side of the guitar industry, and once you gain some insight into what a guitar costs to manufacture these days, even in Indonesia like this one, a lot of things start to make sense. And so I feel like the absence of a gig bag or a case just left some more room for better specs. And if they shipped the 1200 euro guitar in some cheap, shitty, like Squire-esque plasticky gig bag, that would have had more people complaining than just not having anything there and instead packaging the guitar very securely in just plastic and cardboard. And I do have to add that it wasn't just loose in the box or anything like some Schecters I bought it that just get wrapped in plastic and thrown into a box loosely, but it was packaged very securely. And I'll show you a bit of footage on screen right now of the unboxing so you can see what I mean. I mean, Ibanez other people who invented the Xyphos, and if you want to get that thing to customers securely and unscathed, you have to learn how to package shit properly. That being said, the last guitar that I reviewed is this Yamaha Pacifica Standard Plus, and this still has name brand pickups, these are made by Neve, and it has the same Godo locking tuners. And this did come in a very well padded gig bag, despite costing the exact same amount of money. Make of that what you will, the guitar arrived securely without a scratch on it, so I couldn't give a shit less whether or not it has a case. The plastic nut though? Uh, I mean, to be fair, the description did just say plastic, and plastic can mean a lot of things. This is definitely a higher grade of plastic than if you buy a Squire Bullet Stratocaster for $120, but plastic is plastic, and plastic will wear down quicker than not plastic. <laughs> now, to be fair, this is just based off of the Thoman product description, so this could be like a GraphTech tusk nut or something. I can't lick it and taste the difference, I don't know. So, based on the assumption that just plastic is correct, I am unfortunately gonna have to deduct some points here. I don't want to, I kind of feel like a guy in one of those mafia movies strangling his brother and going, Ah, you break my heart, Giuseppe, why are you making me do this? But, it is duly noted. I've also noticed that the voicing switch within the volume knob does as close to nothing as it gets, but that is of course not on Ibanez, that is just how Fishman's work. <laughs> I still appreciate the push-pull switch being there though, because it always annoys me when guitars are sold with Fishman Fluence pickups, but don't have a coil split or don't have the voicing switch, because I paid for the full pickup, so I'd like to be able to use the full range of options the pickup offers. That being said, for the first three or so days of owning this thing, I had no idea it had this feature, and I'm also likely never going to use it again. But I still like that it has it. So now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, my patent pending balloon fret sharpness test and neck dive test. We are using recycled plastic because that is not just better for the environment, but also thinner and flimsier, so it will break if there is anything sticking out. No holes, no scratches. And now for the neck dive test. Now naturally, with a guitar with a regular Nayato body, and then a broad eight string neck with two more tuners on it than a regular guitar, and an extra truss rod inside, it is going to have some neck dive. Let's just see how intense it is. So this is kind of my playing position. This is how I would play it standing up. Let's let go. I mean, yeah, there is some strap friction on my shoulder, obviously, but that is not bad at all. So now let's hear some different samples of this guitar, both in a full and entirely amateur mix context, and then dry on its own.
That was awesome. I'm in love with this thing. It has totally opened up a new world of options for me as far as guitars go. It definitely won't be my last 8-string. I'm not gonna say I have anything planned. Wait, be patient. Um, thank you so much to Ibanez for sending this thing out, and I look forward to making even more content with it. Follow me over on Instagram if you like little mini covers, especially with this thing, because there are a lot more of those coming. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, then subscribe, leave a comment, hit the bell. There are affiliate links for Thurman and Sweetwater in the description. If you want to buy this thing or literally anything else, but they will link to this page if you like it buy it. It's very, very cool. Also, buying anything through my affiliate links enters you to be a part of my affiliate review series. I'll link the last episode of that on screen. I'll also link my most recent video and subscribe. See you around.